Jose Maria Alathabal is one of Spain's golfing greats. He's won six PGA titles and 23 on the European Tour. He's a two-time major winner and has featured in seven Ryder Cups as a player winning four. Last year, he captained the European team to a historic comeback win in Chicago. Last week, Alathabal won the Astorius Award for Sport. How do you feel about winning the Prince of Astorius Award for Sport? whose recipients include a multitude of sporting greats, but only two golfers, Seve Ballesteros and now you. Well, I'm proud and delighted, but it's also a responsibility in the sense that I'm following in the footsteps of Seve. It is very special. It is unique in a way that not only is it based on your sporting achievements, but there are other values that count too. They take into account your personal values. We can say that the main reason you won the Prince of Astorius Award is down to the stunning triumph of the European team in the 2012 Ryder Cup. How did you achieve that historic victory on September the 30th? Well, it was all about the team, really. Dealing with the players, trying to get the best out of each player, believing the battle was never over, trying to convince them we could still turn the tides on that Sunday, also to convince the players that they had to play aggressively, to hunt the victory without fear. All those things eventually came together for us to win the tournament. How much of an impact did the late Seve Ballesteros have on the 2012 Ryder Cup team? Oh, part of the victory was thanks to him, no doubt. When I was preparing the team, the image and the memory of Seve was ever-present. On Sunday, for example, the players were dressed in marine blue and white, Seve's favourite colours to play in on Sundays. And on top of that, we had Seve's image stitched into our shirts and jumpers, as well as the year he was born and the year in which he left us. Some players, like Justin Rose, for example, told me that whilst playing the final day and when things were tight, the players would look at their sleeves and would see the image of Seve. And that motivated them and gave them strength to keep fighting. You have a very special relationship with this tournament. Will you be working with Captain Paul McGinley in the next edition of the Ryder Cup? The Ryder Cup, as you have already said, is a tournament very close to my heart. If Paul McGinley gives me the chance to be vice-captain, or somehow help the team in any way, for sure I will sit down with him and talk. I'm not saying it will be a yes, but I would give it some serious thought. There seems to be a trend of players choosing the American PGA Tour over the European Tour. Why is this and how can we turn the situation around? I think this is because of the economic situation we are living through in Europe at the moment, in all areas. It's harder to get sponsors, and in that sense, the United States is in far better shape. But I am convinced that all those players that have joined the ranks of the American PGA will at some time come back to Europe and compete. What do you think of the controversy surrounding the banning of anchor putting? I believe there are certain things you should keep the same. The sport of golf has its characteristics. When golf was introduced at the beginning, the only part of the body allowed to touch the club was your two hands. For many years there has been a certain amount of tolerance, but I see no harm in returning to the traditional values of the sport. I see no logical reason for a teenager, 13, 14, 15 years old, to start using a belly putter, for example. Who is the best golfer of all time? Well, I think you have to take into account different eras. I believe that the era of Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas was a great one. Tom Watson is also a contender there. While in the modern era, Tiger Woods is by far the number one, and that remains today.
times are different, the courses are different, the materials are different, and it would be unfair to choose a particular player. Jack Nicholas has won the most amount of major titles, but do you think Tiger Woods can do better? When people said that Tiger Woods would never be the same, I've always stayed true to what my gut tells me. When I've played with him, he's physically in great shape, like an athlete. But his greatest strength is in his head, his mind. And that has not changed. That's why I've always said that Tiger will win more majors. I don't know if he'll get the four or five he needs to beat Nicholas, but I'm convinced that it will be very close. How long do you think we will have to wait to see another Spanish golfing great? It's not easy, it's not easy. It is true that we have experienced very good years, golden years. I think Sergio Garcia has enough potential and enough features to become a great player. And I'm convinced that sooner or later it will happen. He still has many years ahead of him, and he's our best asset. When the results aren't going your way and you start to struggle to retain your tool, card. Will you think about retirement? Like everything in life, things begin and end. And in that sense, I'm aware that I'm closer to the end of my career than the beginning. But I've been through some hard times in life. And that has helped me to be strong too. It has helped me to put things into perspective. And all I can do right now is to work hard and stay on the circuit. That's my goal. What will happen for you after golf? Will you become a TV commentator, a pundit? Will you design golf courses? Well, there's many things you can do. Obviously, the design of golf courses attracts me. But there are other things. There are young kids who want to start playing this sport. I have experience and knowledge that could help them. You never know. Create a score, maybe. There are so many possibilities, not only becoming a commentator. I think that you can do many, many things.